Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. This podcast is being sponsored by Get Loopy. On episode 41, you can hear the story of Isabel, the co-founder and CEO. Get Loopy, get a 20% discount off your first order. Getloopy.com Take it from the Iron Woman. Again, we have a very special guest with us. We have Amar Qureshi. Welcome, Amar. Before we recorded, you told me about your silent retreat. You have been in Indonesia. So what was the time that you did for yourself in, in the lockdown that you think was beneficial for you? I meditate quite regularly. And so I think the lockdown has been an opportunity to fully focus on my, mm -hmm. on my meditation. Mm -hmm. But it was not because of the lockdown. I have mm -hmm. been meditating actually for a long time. And uh, you know, this silent 10-day silent retreat The Vipassana meditation I went to was a year ago in April for 10 days, which was mm -hmm. a very interesting experience. But before that also, I, you know, I, I was interested in meditation. Mm -hmm. And I started, I think, in my, the first sort of course I took in meditation was probably in my mid-20s. Mm -hmm. so then I started and stopped and started and stopped. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the, the practice of meditation builds on itself after a while, just mm -hmm. like if you, know, if you do something over time and you don't have to necessarily do it consistently every day and mm -hmm. otherwise it doesn't work i think it does it works so mm -hmm. the intention mm -hmm. to do it is very important right? mm -hmm. because the intention itself i think changes something within us that we then it starts a little search for meaning or purpose and i think it's a little bit uh, when i say search for meaning it's May not to some it may sound odd because it, it means oh well there's meaningless and so you're looking for meaning not at all actually mm -hmm. right so you can I mean a person's life everything that I've done physically has meaning in its own way everything mm -hmm. that I've done my children mm -hmm. having children mm -hmm. patients I saw the projects I run people I mm -hmm. work with everything has everything actually has meaning mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. but when you look for the meaning of life is What is the what is the connectedness? Connectedness. Mm -hmm. What what points? You know, what thread runs through all of these mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. that connects it all? Mm -hmm. right? A why? Is there a why? And what is that why? If there is a why, so mm -hmm. that is a looking thread. So I think the intention, the desire to find that, is sort of the meditative instinct, the contemplative instinct. And so you you know, there's the intent, and then the effort. So to try to do that, because in a normal day, whether in lockdown or not, there are so many distractions. Yeah. Right? There are so many distractions. In fact, you sit to meditate and you think, oh, I didn't do that. I better do this. Oh, I left that. So you <laughs> have sudden urge to get up and go and do it. But, but actually, those urges, I think in a way, is what meditation is about. Mm -hmm. In meditation, one has to actually overcome those urges. That's what it, meditation is about. Right. I am not sure I know of anybody who sits, ever sits down to meditate who doesn't immediately get filled with to-do lists. I have to do this, <laughs> I must do this, mm -hmm. I must go there. And that is the nature of meditation. Mm -hmm. But a successful meditation, actually, is overcoming those mm -hmm. urges. You mm -hmm. sit there, right? And that doesn't mean you kind of struggle, fight them, because it's just that you don't mind them. Mm -hmm. okay? And you sit there for... You know, one hour, which is what I am, I'm trying to do now, and I, mm -hmm. I do. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Or five minutes. Mm -hmm. right? I think it's not a it's not a length of time. Mm -mm. It's not no. that oh, I didn't do 30 minutes or one hour, so it's unsuccessful. 
Five minutes is successful also mm -hmm. if you are starting. Mm -hmm. is to, but to sit there and understand that one has these urges to get up and do all these things, to do, to do, to do, but let something inside you say no. Okay, I have these urges, these things have to be done, but right now I'm not doing them. Mm -hmm. I, I decide to sit here mm -hmm. and do nothing. Okay, I decide. So then that I creates that um, kind of a mindfulness begins to emerge, right? Mm -hmm. That is the I of being mm -hmm. as opposed to the me of doing, mm -hmm. the equivalent me, the nervous me, the anxious me, the worried me that, well, oh, something's going to happen if I don't do this, if I don't buy that. <laughs> yeah. That's true. The insufficiency. Yeah. And for the listeners, I mean, since we do that work, with, which I think is, is phenomenal to do, I always feel like... Oh, I get so much out of the sessions when I talk to the group and also the facilitators. I think that's also a nice exchange that we sometimes have. But what is your definition of mindfulness? I had a neighbor asking me, what is mindfulness? I need to have one or two words. And I went on and on on, on my interpretation, what it means to me. So I'm wondering, what does mindfulness mean to you? I think... Mindfulness is becoming popular now. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, right? yeah. I mean, there's a lot of coaches being mindful about this podcast, mindful, mm -hmm. mindful. Mm -hmm. So I think there is an increasing interest and a desire for this mm -hmm. otherness or some kind of mm -hmm. you know, deeper meaning. I think very simply to be mindful is to be aware. That's what mindfulness. And what are, what are we to be aware of? It's, it's, very, it's much easier to be aware of others although not necessarily not necessarily so i think more and more you see people on the street sitting on the subway they're working on their smartphones right mm -hmm. and not aware of anybody around them mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. so that's not not a given mm -hmm. but even so it's e it's much easier to see other people be critical of other people or make commentary about other mm -hmm. people but we actually are much less aware of ourselves okay and i mean the physical analogy of that is that you know, we see each other. You know, I, I see you know, my colleagues, I see my family, I see my friends, but I never see myself. Mm -hmm. I only look in a mirror and I see a reflection of myself. And likewise, I see a reflection of myself in how others treat me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and act towards me. So I, we never see ourselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I think mindfulness, getting to the core of it, is trying to become more self-aware, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I, ah, I'm thinking these things and I'm supposed to do these kinds of things, right? And so to be able to step a little bit away from all the things we do automatically, like our brain is always racing, right? Mm -hmm. The autopilot, which we call. Yeah, sure. Our, in our, in the leadership group, okay? So to be able to step away from that mm -hmm. and to watch the minds, right? Just like we watch other people to become watchful watch of... Ourselves. Mm -hmm. ourselves right and it's kind of almost paradoxical to so watch our mind what do mm -hmm. we think our thoughts what are we thinking and mm -hmm. don't act on them right just watch mm -hmm. them out of almost a disinterested not get attached with it what am i feeling right now okay, i could be feeling a bit worried anxious angry ah okay i'm feeling anxious i'm feeling angry i'm feeling worried i'm feeling sad just watch that right mm -hmm. just like you would watch someone sitting if you weren't on your smartphone across from you on a subway, for mm -hmm. example, or in a mm -hmm. park bench, that person looks sad. I think perhaps many of us don't even notice that anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. So observe these things. I think that's what my mindful, that's getting to mm -hmm. core of mindfulness, is to become aware in a different way mm -hmm. of, of who we are, what we are, how we interact with other people, what's mm -hmm. actually going on when, when we do communicate or don't mm -hmm. communicate. I think that's beautiful. We have to be more observant and especially when I or when I used to take the subway in New York City, it's sad to see when everybody's on the smartphone and me included, but I use that time to answer some emails probably. But sometimes I would consciously put it away and look around because initially I always thought like everybody has a different story to tell and it's so rich 
what you see yeah. in the subway, but now with yeah. the smartphones, people don't pay attention to each other anymore. Mm -hmm. It seems like, yeah. so it's a little sad. I think, you know, what I have found is what makes life meaningful, more meaningful, you know, are the connections we have mm -hmm. around us. Okay. I think if we hold ourselves completely separate in isolation, we're locked in our own concerns and our own minds, our thoughts, mm -hmm. worries. We, we create a sort of hell. I mean, hell is within us. I mm -hmm. think it was C.S. Lewis who observed that. So that's where we experience, start experiencing a kind of hell. Mm -hmm. But heaven is all around us. Right? Both, yeah. So when we start interacting and we start seeing things, whether, and I don't only mean nature, but just even people, I think that's kind of, you know, to, to find that awareness, the mm -hmm. self, the center of the self, and then connect, connect with others and yeah. find then, in fact, how deeply we are, in fact, connected with everyone and everything else. We are not separate at all. Very nice. Thank you so much. I think this is very inspirational to hear. And it seems like we're doing the same work, but everybody comes from a different background or, I mean, like geographical background or even educational background, but then we're teaching or coaching the same. So it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm, to talk about mm -hmm. that. I think that's really actually one of the things I, I find most remarkable, I guess, in a sense of like, it, I, I like it very much, is how different everybody and everything is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the richness of our existence. Right? Yeah. The, the true, again, another word like mindfulness, diversity. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. so, but the true diversity is actually the differences and to accept those differences, yeah. but to understand that, you know, in fact, we are all part of the same. That's not mm -hmm. to say there are no differences, right? Because then that's a whitewash. That's not diversity. Right? So, but to say that we are all part of the same. And is it acceptance? Probably. I think, I think it's an acceptance, tolerance, uh, but probably a recognition mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well, right? And the celebration. That, I like to say celebration. Celebration. Yeah, yeah, yes. Celebration, and going back to the celebration, definitely, uh, but going back to that recognition part that that person could also be me. I could also be that person mm -hmm. if I was born in a different place in a different time. I think that makes, that creates that acceptance, right? That mm -hmm. we are all set in a different place in this time-space continuum, mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm. right? And that actually is our journey, our point of journey. We didn't put ourselves physically there. We didn't choose, I didn't choose to be born in Pakistan. I mean, there was some choice involved in what <laughs> I've done subsequently, but even mm -hmm. so, so many things shaped my shape. Mm -hmm. As a 16 year old, I didn't go get on a plane myself. There's so many different, there's this interconnectedness of what's what. Mm -hmm. So this is, that's the diversity. You know, everything is so unique and mm -hmm. different but yet it is all interconnected and we are all interconnected. Thank you so much, Amar. I think we can talk for hours and hours, a glimpse into your world in Singapore or wherever you come from, wherever home is for you. But thank you so much for sharing with us. Well, thank you, Susan. It's been a real pleasure. What a nice, interesting, mindful conversation here something different than talking about sport. What is your meditation? What is your mindfulness? What is your focus? We want to know. Leave a comment. Ask questions. Be curious. Just be. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday and every Wednesday. Chime in and make sure to purchase. Get loopy. You get a 20% discount of your first order. Get loopy.com. Take it from the Iron Woman. Thank you for listening.